I'm James Spann. This is the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video for Labor Day, Monday, the 6th of September, the holiday edition. And the weather's been just downright perfect for this time of the year, and it stays pretty good today. But tropical action firing up in the Gulf. Let's take a look at the uh, images. These captured a little later this morning than I typically do the updates, so we've got the sun beginning to come up. These were about uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, that's a look at uh, the Tuscaloosa sky cam. Uh, the sun coming up over Bryant Denny Stadium. Look at the uh, Fayette sky cam, downtown Fayette. Nice to see a little daylight out there on a clear, very delightful morning. And man, that's nice. Oh boy, the Tennessee River is seen from the sky cam up in Decatur. And yeah, it is nice. Look at Haleyville, 49 degrees. Ah, the long, hot summer beginning to fade. Understand, we'll have plenty of uh, pretty toasty days left, but the uh, really nasty heat is now behind us. Uh, most folks are in the 50s. Birmingham sitting at 65. It's the old uh, urban heat island effect, the uh, infrastructure keeping it uh, uh, relatively warm. Interestingly enough, the record low for Birmingham today is 53, set in 1984. And, and for many of the outlying areas, we break that. Uh, look at Muscle Shoals. They've got 51. Uh, Tuscaloosa and Aniston, 55. Water vapor satellite shot showing dry air all across the deep south. Strong wave coming through the northern Rockies. In fact, uh, let's look at the numbers up there. Yeah, I see some 30s and 40s. Probably got some snowflakes flying up there through parts of the mountains. But again, down here, numbers look just great. Convective outlook, there is a slight risk of severe weather today in advance of that big trough up north for cities like Des Moines and Minneapolis-St. Paul. And there's the rain for the next five days. Uh, this is suggesting eh, maybe a little bit here. And uh, again, I, I think we are going to get back into a pattern of scattered showers and storms. We might even see one as early as late tomorrow, but over the latter half of the week, we'll have some out there every day, but they will be hit and miss. You know how that works. And heaviest rain on the board is down there around South Padre Island in South Texas with a new tropical storm by the name of Hermine that formed overnight out of a tropical depression down there coming out of the Bay of Campeche. And elsewhere on the board, we have a new wave coming off the coast of Africa and what used to be Gaston that's approaching the Leeward Islands. And uh, quite frankly, a little surprising that that is not developed, but you can look at the satellite imagery and see one problem. It's clearly surrounded by very dry air. And that seems to have uh, impeded the progress of Gaston this weekend. Here's Hermine. That looks like a very wet system down there in the southwestern Gulf, and you can see the old frontal boundary draped out nicely across the Gulf. And really, it's pretty clear cut. This thing is going to come up toward uh, the southern tip of Texas uh, late tonight, early tomorrow morning as a, a, a tropical storm. The top wind's now 40 miles an hour, mainly going to be a rainmaker. Uh, heavy rain for uh, Brownsville, McAllen, the Lower Valley, South Padre, and kind of looping up through central Texas. The Interstate 35 corridor clearly should see an increase in rain this week from that, from uh, San Antonio up through Austin, Waco, and Dallas-Fort Worth. All right, out there in the uh, central Atlantic, or say central, really now the uh, Atlantic approaching the Caribbean is what used to be Gaston, a remnant low. And that air out there is just really dry. And uh, that's been a problem. And now it looks like this thing might try and come across Hispaniola, which could be a big problem. That island is very mountainous and often can be a death blow to some of these systems like this. Now, uh, there's the uh, track uh, coming from the models, and almost all the dynamic models bring it a little south of uh, Hispaniola over toward Jamaica. And if it can stay south of the island there of, of Hispaniola, it's got a chance of getting its act together. It just seems like there's a lot of dry air in the wake of the earlier systems, uh, Danielle and Earl. And once it gets down in through here, that thing might pop in a hurry if it can stay away from the island. And then the models are kind of split. You've got some models that don't develop it and some that ramp it up. Well, one ramps it up to a Category 4 hurricane. So uh, I say let's keep an eye on this thing. And it is too early to determine if it will be a Gulf storm or keep coming toward uh, maybe Mexico. We'll just have to wait and see. But it certainly is a candidate to think about getting up in the Gulf here in a week or so. Let's look at the GFS. We'll take a look at the 06Z run. Why not, since we're doing this a little later? This is at 1 o'clock today. There's your strong wave up in the northern Rockies. Uh, down below that, beautiful Labor Day. Sunny, uh, low humidity, dew points only in the 40s, but a little warmer. We'll be up there close to 90 today. And look at the cooler air coming in behind that uh, wave up in the northern Rockies. And there's 
Hermine coming up into uh, Mexico and South Texas. Tomorrow, look at the old 594 ring beginning to build. That'll get us up in the low 90s and down below that. South Texas, off, uh, South Texas is awfully wet. The GFS looks dry tomorrow, and I, I don't have the graphics to show you, but I will say the NAM is much more aggressive with moisture return, and it even hints there could be a shower tomorrow. We're not going to mention it for now, but uh, just keep that in mind. And Wednesday, pretty much the same deal. Uh, what's left of uh, Hermine is up into uh, places like Childress and Lubbock, and uh, the GFS suggesting there might be just a slight chance of a shower, but really the NAM is more aggressive. Thursday, the same deal. What's left of Hermine is kind of curving up into the westerlies there. And then Friday, uh, looks like it's over Indianapolis. And again, around here, the GFS is pretty dry. But I think every day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we need to mention some risk of an afternoon shower or storm. Will it be widespread? No. But I think that the chance is there, despite this dry look coming off the GFS. There's Saturday kicking off the weekend. we got flat ridging down here. And uh, down below that, a surface boundary coming in from the northwest. And then Sunday, that thing drifts in here. So of the two days over the weekend, it looks like the day with a better chance of rain would be on Sunday with an incoming front. Then a week from today, the front drifts down toward Interstate 20 and stalls out. Let's go up there five more days. What's that up there in the North Atlantic? GFS depicting a tropical cyclone up there. Um, you'd think that that would not be Gaston. Perhaps another wave it tries to develop, but again, uh, clearly no impact here if that happens to be right, and that's pure voodoo. And then on the 21st, the end of the cycle, nice trough over the east. And down below that, a surface boundary coming in with some nice cool continental air trying to nose in. But again, on this run, no sign of mischief in the Gulf of Mexico so far. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We're doing the holiday schedule, just one a day today. We'll have the next Weather Extreme video by tomorrow morning at 7, and we go back on the two-a-day schedule then. And if you're local to us, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great Labor Day, and God bless.